Hey, Roy, this is Perch. Um, I don't have the answer to the question this mail asks exactly, um, but it is it, it does seem strange to me. And I'm going to try and make the case. And really, in this video, um, I am talking to supporters of this, people who, who want more LGBTQ representation in comics. Not not like as an activist kind of thing, but just as a people like like let's say you know there's a bunch of, of fans of the X Men and other places that will post on Twitter other things like they're really glad to see um, you know LGBTQ representation in comics and they would like more. And uh, this mail is about the X Men. Uh, well, it's sort of the X Men. It's the Pride issue, X Men, uh, Mystique and Destiny wedding issue. And, um, and I read this comic and, and a while back, like a long while back, I did a video talking with the analysis comic saying how weird it was and saying that it bothered me, not because you were having a you know, lesbian wedding, but because, you know, the Avengers are hanging out, um, you know, celebrating this wedding between two criminals. Like, it, it, I mean. And I understand, oh, they're LGBTQ icons and everything else. And it really, to me, honestly, you know what? And I'm curious if anyone else has this take. Forget about all the culture war bullshit. We're not really going to get into culture war in this video. That's not really what it's about. But um, to me, a lot of the Mystique Destiny stuff feels like somebody at Marvel woke up one day and said, fuck, Harley Quinn and, uh, and, and Poison Ivy are in a relationship. And they're both kind of villain characters. But they're not villain characters, but they are kind of in the same hand, and so they get to do the old be gay, do crime stuff. And uh, what, what's our, who's our be gay, do crime duo? I mean, we got uh, Wiccan and Hulkling, but those two are vanilla. Like they're they're just heroes saving stuff. And you know, who's our who's our uh, villains, but not villains? Like they're they're clearly criminals doing bad things, but we write them nice enough that. Like, they're only going to kill the fascists and the Republicans. They're not really going to kill real bad people. So who, who's our poison ivy and Harley Quinn? Every time that when Marvel start really, really pushing the Mystique Destiny romance, which for many years, and and I'm sorry, I've met Chris Claremont, I've talked to Chris Claremont a bunch of time, I've seen the, the commentary around how, well, it was always our intention to have them be a lesbian couple. Bullshit. I'm sorry, I don't agree. I do not believe that. I believe that is a retcon comment. I, I, including you, Claremont, I don't believe that's true. You wrote tons of comics where Mystique was horny all over the place and Destiny was an old woman. And uh, you wrote it like grandma to the, you know, the brotherhood. Like, I, I, you know, no. You read some of those Freedom Force issues back during the Fall of Mutants. That was not your intention. Because if it was your intention, you were going for a bizarre aged incest vibe in that thing i i'm i'm sorry no you know i don't believe it. now there's nothing wrong with changing your mind everything else but you know claremont did this interview is like this is always what i intended oh no it is not because if it is you had some really weird kinks going on and i'm not talking about you know i'm not talking about lgbtq representation i'm talking about the fact that mystique like said you're like my grandma like nah i disagree full disagree anyway he went for this relationship, it's fine. But in the back of my head, I always feel like this is Marvel trying to do a Me Too to uh, to the Harley Quinn, uh, Poison Ivy relationship. Does anybody else think that? That's how it comes across. Because it feels, it's, it's not that it's unnatural, it just feels very forced. And particularly lately, when it's like, these two are a, a, a pride icon. It's like, ah, hey, you know what? I, I mean, do, do you remember the Wolverine solo series where called Get Mystique, where Wolverine was going after Mystique and he slept with her, and then also she was sleeping with other guys, and it's like, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I'm sorry, I don't think so. Anyway, I read this comic, um, and it, it, you know, it, it was as it was somehow dumber than I expected. Like they, they, they're getting married. It's not just the Avengers are supporting them, the marriage. They get married in the Avengers mansion. Like in the mansion, like how in the how in the living hell? So there's a Captain America, and then we're like, let's let's open up this mansion for a celebration of a lesbian wedding for two people who are who are wanted in the majority of countries, and 
you know, just a couple of years ago, we're murdering people. But sure, it's fine. Like Captain America is giving Mystique a wedding gift. I'm so proud of you. Really? Really? You're not arresting her? Love conquers all. Captain America. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So this, this comic comes out. And it's painful and dumb. And um, I, there's one scene in it, which I think this uh, letter writer is kind of referring to. And it's, it's a short letter. It says, um, Hey, Perch. I have a question for you. I recently read the Destiny Mystique wedding issue, and in it, there are a number of chapters, there are, of different stories featuring uh, LGBT icons. I give Marvel credit. This is kind of a clever way to do the Pride anthology without making it an anthology. You kind of get tricked into thinking that this is a real story. I think it means like one real full story. Um, in one of the chapters, Rachel Summers and Betsy Braddock, who are now a lesbian couple, by the way, when did this happen? Happened in Excalibur. G.D. Howard did this. Uh, in this story, the two of them are fighting various villains, and during it, Betsy Braddock and Rachel Summers are running around, killing off their enemies and using their powers while holding hands. My question is, why is it that all LGBTQ comics have characters behaving this way? It doesn't make any sense to have people in a relationship holding hands and kissing each other during the middle of the fight. You don't see this happen with Reed and Sue Richards or Clark Kent and Lois. Kent and Lois are clearly in love with each other, but you don't have scenes where Superman is flying around attacking Brainiac while simultaneously holding Lois and giving her kissing kisses on the neck. Why do people think this is okay for LGBTQ plus stories, but not for straight couples? I'm genuinely curious this isn't a troll. Uh, thank you for that. By the way, how screwed up is it that we now live in a, in a time where uh, we have to constantly like give subnotes and, and, you know, we have to excuse like, just to be clear, this comic art is terrible and it wasn't printed correctly and the colors were all wrong, but I am not racist. Like, why, why do you, why, like, isn't it sad that we have to constantly put in these disclaimers for things that are just stupid? So, uh, the story that the letter writer is referring to is, is truly a Psylocke or what Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain, Psylocke, whatever, um, Rachel Summers, uh, you know, New Phoenix story. And the letter writer is correct. And I noticed this too when I read it. There were all these scenes where the two of them are running around having, you know, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's like an, it is an anthology. That's very well said. It's, it's, it's basically an anthology. It's hiding itself as a complete comic. But in this comic, uh, you've got the two of them, Braddock and Summers, um, holding hands and, and doing kind of romantic things while in the middle of the fight. And they're grinning and laughing and having a good time. And I think it's, it's, it's goofy for a few reasons okay, that have nothing to do with the fact that both characters are gay. By the way, I do think both characters being gay is weird, given that we've seen kind of the future of, of Rachel and, and just like a little bit Bobby Drake, we've seen lots of scenes of Betsy Braddock being extremely straight. So now she's get, like, like that, that, it clearly was Teeny Howard sold the editor on like, fuck it, let's make him gay. And that's what they did. But it doesn't make any sense if you've read other X-Men comics. The only way a lot of this stuff makes sense is if you haven't read anything that's, say, longer than five years old, and these characters all could just be created to be whatever you want. I do expect, by the way, one of the, uh, the big two, and it will be Marvel, to reveal that one of the characters is actually trans. And we just never knew. Like, uh, you know, it's like, hey, this character has been trans all along. They actually transitioned, you know, off panel many, many, many years ago. And uh, you thought this was a, you thought this was a girl, but no. It's good. I mean, I, I almost, I guarantee you that's coming. And everybody will get outraged about it. There'll be a lot of like, what, you got problem with trans field or all this bullshit. And it, what we'll ignore is the real question in all of this, which is, but does this make any sense? We've seen tons and tons of comics. Does this make any sense? It's like, oh, Jubilee was always trans. It's like, but does that make any goddamn sense? She's appeared in a thousand issues, and now you're doing it. Like, 
That doesn't make any sense. Okay. That has nothing to do with whether you support trans people, do not support trans people. A friend of mine, uh, him and his wife had a daughter. Daughter has come out as trans. Now their son. Um, I, you know, it's a kid. And I, you know, however, however I feel about any of that, you know, the kid needs support and I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be a good friend to the, to the kid, of course. But in comic books, it's story and there's a lot of history to it. So does this make sense? And I don't, and I think to the letter writer there, um, the problem with all this is just that it doesn't make sense. The, the Rachel and Betsy running around holding hands while in a fight doesn't make any sense as a fight. It has nothing to do whether you support LGBTQ rights or not. It The problem is, like, they're they're in the middle of a fight, a fight that supposedly matters, right? You're, I mean, we should, like, uh, presumably this fight has stakes and, you know, you want the heroes to win. And so they're, like, this, this doesn't make any sense. It wouldn't make any sense if it was Reed and Sue Richards. It wouldn't make any sense if it was Clark and Lois. This doesn't make any sense. There's a reason why you don't have panels of Reed and Sue holding hands while fighting Dr. Doom. Because you need both those hands free to, you know, win against the tyrant that's going to blow up the earth. You want that, you want that, you know, eyes on the prize, right? So um, that's what's important. And the thing that's goofy about about these comics is that I think they defeat themselves because it's a superhero book. So you want the characters to be, you know, to, to, you want to portray them as powerful as just as capable as straight people, for example. And when you've got them running around doing dumb shit like that, it doesn't feel like they're strong and capable. It feels like it's somebody's idea of a gag on the page. And I think that's, that's the, you know, that, that's why it's so weird. Um, it's why it's a bad idea to do that. It's, it has nothing to do with, hey, we can't have gay characters in comics. Of course you can have gay characters in comics. I have gay characters in comics for a long time. But, you know, when they're fighting evil, you should treat them seriously. If you care about LGBTQ rights and everything else, you should treat them seriously. You shouldn't treat them like a goddamn joke. And so much of this comes across like a joke. It comes across like, uh, you know, the people writing it are not really writing a comic book. They're writing a gag. And so it's, uh, you know, it's like, well, we're going to, you know, and, and you can, you, the easy, uh, by the way, the easy uh, argument that a lot of people use with this stuff is to say, oh, why are you taking it so serious? It's just comic books. Okay. But if that's the way we're going to look at this, we're going to say, you know, hey, it's just comic books. So therefore, we, you know, why are we taking it seriously? Then my question would be, you know, why, why would you bother with any of this in the first place? You know, you want to have, you're doing a, a issue, a pride issue to support LGBTQ rights. Are you telling me that's not serious to you? So you're going to do funny, silly jokes in the middle of that thing that, that make the characters look look dumb because it because it, it does it it you know it it's it, I, the, the good litmus test would always be this if it was a straight couple running around holding hands and being ridiculous while you know fighting presumably a threat to the multiverse um wouldn't wouldn't that look stupid you would not you would say that's dumb so so why why do you subject LGBTQ characters, lesbian characters, to something that is dumb. Do you not, wouldn't you want more for them? You, you wouldn't want more for them, for them than that, right? You would want them to be respected. You would want them to, you know, hold a, a, a right? That, that's the part that's weird to me about a lot of this stuff. And when you look at the pride issues, whether DC or Marvel, it always feels like the people who are doing the writing and, and creating the story are taking the piss out of the characters. It doesn't feel like they're taking it seriously. It doesn't feel like they're trying to create a, a actual legitimate, like, this is somebody you should look up to. And I thought that was what the point was, that we were, we were trying to make stories of heroes that you, you know, these are just as strong, just as good, just as noble, just as heroic as straight characters. That's what you would want. So, 
you sabotage your own efforts by making the characters ludicrous stereotypes of each other. Like, th that seems counterproductive to what you're trying to do, right? I don't know. I, again, I may be looking at this wrong, and my critics will come on and be like, ah, that guy's just a homophobe. I'm the one here arguing for these stories not to be stupid. I would think a homophobe would be like, hot damn, this, this story is ridiculous, silly, the characters look, look stupid, and it makes everybody look dumb. Good. Good. Because gay people don't get real stories. I would think that would be the reaction. But instead, um, it's... I, I don't know. I don't get it. So maybe you could explain it to me in the uh, comments below. But I would think that the goal here would be to try and make good, legitimate stories that treat the characters with respect, not treat them like, you know, parodies of themselves, which is what often happens. But I don't know. You let me know. Am I, do I have it wrong? Because I guarantee you some people listen to this video and be like, oh, there's Perch the Chud complaining about LGBTQ comics. Yeah, I'm, my argument is I want them to be good. My argument is I want the characters to be taken seriously. Even if I disagree with the Rachel Betsy, you know, pairing, because I I do think from continuity's sake, I think it's insane. But regardless of all that, um, I, I'm arguing for the comics to be treated with the characters to be treated with respect, for them to be treated like they're legitimate, you know, important characters, not like they are parodies of themselves. I thought that's what we wanted. I thought that's what you wanted. Thanks for listening.